She's got the power. Florida State Senator uses a political power to get electric power restored for her mother after Hurricane Irma. Howdy, folks. Uh, my name is Paul Gordon. I am with iState.tv, and this is an iState.tv news watch. And we'll <laughs> dive right in. This is a story of power. Restoring power and having the audacity and power to flaunt your abuse of power while facing no real consequences for your actions. This is the story of American politics, Florida style. After Hurricane Irma left the state of Florida, 12 million Floridians found themselves without power. Now, some of the people without power happened to include the mother as well as the sister of a powerful state senator in Florida by the name of Daphne Campbell, Democrat, North Miami Beach. Now, what do you do when your kin doesn't have power? What do you do when you find yourself with a different kind of power, maybe mainly political power. I tell you what you do, folks. You do what it appears Daphne Campbell did. Now, when I say appears, I could also say allegedly. I'm not saying for sure that this is what she did, but it certainly appears that I will make the case that it it is what she did. I'm only making the case. I have said allegedly. That's what you do when you do a news story. You want to make sure that's the CYA. You always have to say allegedly. So we'll, we'll interchange appears and allegedly throughout this report. So you do what she allegedly did. You use that power to turn on the power for your mother as well as your sister. Now, a website named Rise News originally broke the story of text messages being sent from the Florida State Senator to a John H. Hawley. And he happens to be the vice president of Florida and of, of Florida Power and Light. And as it so happens, the senator from North Miami Beach sits on the Committee on Communications, Energy, and Public Utilities. <gasps> coincidence nothing to see here folks needless to say this would be a committee of significant interest to florida power and light the text messages were sent starting monday september 12th just a day after the storm had moved through the state and ended tuesday september 13th and i have the transcript here by the way if you want to see this transcript as well as the link to well, this story on iState.tv as well as uh, the, the, the story from Rise News. Go to iState.tv and also you'll find the link to the story in the description below as well. And you'll also find it in the comment. Yes, we put it in the comment and in the description just in case. We'll make sure you find that freaking link because that's how we roll. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little acting here. I'm going to play both Senator Campbell and John H. Hawley. So first, I'm Senator Campbell. John, good afternoon. Can someone help me with the power? By the way, that's I'm sure that's a typo, but it, it literally says helps. So I'm just reading the text. So if you see me or hear me say something ungrammatical, it's it's in the text, and, and I'm not... Not criticizing anyone for, for having bad grammar or spelling in text. Because, oh, if you read my text messages. Well, if you could read my text messages. I do have a sick person in my house, and she's using oxygen. The address is, uh, address is given. Same then, my children's house address given. Thanks, Senator Campbell. Mm, John. I'm John now. Let me see what we can do. It's ugly out there. How are you doing? Senator Campbell. Well, this one is my sister. I was working as only nurse and was the only... Dot, dot, dot. And the image is cut off so you can't see the rest of what she said in, in that particular exchange. A little time passes. Still the same day. 
and she says, "Thank you very much, but my sister, uh, my sister's one still not on yet." Million thanks. My sick mom thanked you too. Yay, John Holly, working on it. Senator Campbell, the power for my mom off again. Can you please ask someone to take care of that ASAP? John Holly, I will def let them know. D E F, short for definitely. Senator Campbell, John, please give a call. I need food for those with no power. Can you help? And then we go to Tuesday, September 13th, and we just see this text. John, this is from Senator Campbell. John, good morning, Miami. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, that's all it's, <laughs> I don't know what that means. According to Rise News, Campbell herself bragged about her power connections at a recent event this past Saturday night which was September 16th, in North Miami. So so she was the one who actually allowed Rise News to take a picture of her phone showing the text. The power was eventually restored to her mother's home with some of her mother's neighbors also seeing their power restored. Much of, of the neighborhood there, or the community there, however, is, is actually still still without power. The majority of of the folks that surround her mom are still without power as of the writing of this article, which is September 19th. Uh, in South Florida alone, by the way, with the, which is the area that the senator represents, over 66,000 homes are, are still without power. For her part, uh, the senator obviously believes she has done nothing wrong. For the ca power company's part, they also believe that nothing wrong has been done. FPL spokesperson Mark Babriski claimed he was, quote, positive, but she did not receive special treatment. Of course, being able to ping the VP of the company and get your mother and sister moved to the top of the restoration list wouldn't at all constitute special treatment, right? So, so Campbell... <laughs> I, I love what she does here. Clint Campbell has told local media outlets that since her mother is a constituent, it wasn't out of, bound, out of bounds for her to ask for special service since her mother is on oxygen. Of course, this begs the question, why did her text only focus on her mother and her sister? And, and why her sister? What special reason did she have to request her sister get pushed to the front of the line to get her power restored? By the way, in some of the articles that uh, I, I I read, uh, that that the, these questions were not asked in in the articles. I mean, hey, good on local news media at least covering the story, but those those obvious questions were not asked. And and here's a few more questions that. Uh, uh, maybe the local news media there is, is, is going to actually get to, but I'm going to get to it right now. So the hurricane was tracking to hit Florida well more than a week before it hit. And as it approached, it became increasingly clear that this would be, at the very least, a major power interruption. If her mother needed power for her oxygen, then why was she or her family not assuring that her mother had a generator. I can tell you, I I am speaking to you from the alleged, uh, well, I'll say the great state of Pennsylvania. What the heck? And uh, Irma was a threat to hit us, uh, possibly. It's a remote, but still. I'm going to let you know I was prepared. I'm still prepared because Hurricane Maria is uh, floating out there. That might still hit us. Jose still might. Well, Jose's probably not going to affect us, but. But I, I am prepared, and I don't have anybody on oxygen, and I'm also not a state senator. So the excuse for why she felt she could push her mother to the front of the line by calling the VP of Florida Power and Light, which, which happens to be one of the most powerful lobbyists in the state, I, I, I think it falls far short of credible belief of the hundreds of thousands of Floridians still without power. I'm willing to bet, given Florida's demographic, that many of them include homes where people are are also on oxygen. 
So this woman sits on the committee in state government that has the most power to affect Florida power and life. Yet this woman had the audacity not just to claim she did nothing wrong, but to actually offer the information herself to a local news outlet, Rise News. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm. I don't know about you, but I. I, I think that one would have to be an actor of the highest caliber to be able to muster a surprise face <laughs> if it were to eventually come out that the senator from North Miami Beach had reason to believe the special pleading for special privilege, Senate power privilege, was going to be discovered. There's, there's nothing that I've seen that indicates that that might be true, but yeah, this would be my shock face. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was an actor of, of a high, a high quality caliber, maybe actor of the, you know, maybe if I was Jennifer Lawrence, well, first of all, I would probably look a little. Well, actually, I'm pretty good looking, so no, I'm not. I'm not going to bust myself down because of Jennifer Lawrence. Let's just say if I had Jennifer Lawrence's uh, quality acting, then my surprise face would be, <gasps> what? But I'm not, so my surprise face would be. Mm -hmm. So, think about it. What do you do when you know bad news is going to come out about you? You release it first, and you attempt to own the news. After all, they'll say, if she really thought she did something wrong, surely she wouldn't voluntarily reveal what she did, right? Right, right. Now, now there is another possibility, and I don't know. I think this possibility may actually be worse. And the other possibility for why this senator from North Miami Beach might voluntarily reveal this information is this. The woman lives in such a safe senatorial power space that she could not begin to fathom how inappropriate it was to attempt to curry favor with a powerful lobbyist, the most powerful lobbyist that her committee affects, especially once he did so at a profound time of crisis for the rest of her so-called constituents. Either way, putting on my, my, oh, you know what? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Let me get my coughs out because this is a psychedelic uh, thing I'm building up here. <coughs> psychedelic coughing, psychedelic coughing here. Hold on. Now, I know it looks stupid in this app, but this is a hat of power. This is, yes, I have it now. Mm. Putting on my magic political psych. I see a self-investigation that comes to the conclusion that we investigate our shit. We can get we. I can't even say it with a straight face. We investigated ourselves and we found that we did nothing wrong. Now, from what it appears, she comes from a heavily Democratic district, and she appears to bring home the fat from the state coffers to her district. Given all this information. My political, my magic political psychic hat mm, helps me see. Hold on. Mm. Mm, I'm, I'm starting to see it's starting to form. I see a self-investigation that comes to nothing. I see. Oh, it reveals to me, it reveals to me that the senator from North Miami Beach will suffer nothing but some negative stories for a few weeks, at least until the next faux outrage pops on the news media screens. Now, perhaps she has a reason to feel comfortable sharing her deliberate abuse of power to restore power for her family members. Perhaps she gets a perverse pleasure knowing she can dupe her constituents. Did I say constituents? That she can dupe her constituents, flaunt her office's alleged code of ethics, and I, I use the word ethics loosely, by the way, and still come out at the end with all of her powers restored, undiminished, Folks, if my political psychic hat fails me, okay, here, this, this hat, if my political psychic hat fails me, 
I'll let you know. And I tell you what, then I'll eat it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been an iState News Watch, and I am Paul Gordon, your, your wonderful, fantabulous host, and you are watching us on YouTube.com forward slash iState. Be sure, if you like this video, be sure that you'll subscribe, subscribe, and if you'll subscribe, no, it tells me that I don't need to subscribe to myself, and it's absolutely right, but when you subscribe, then you see the bell, you'll make sure you hit, well, not that bell up there, there'll be a bell about right there. You be sure you hit that bell. You get notifications for all of our latest videos. I thank you for joining us here on iState TV's News Watch. We'll see you, well, we'll see you when we make our next News Watch. Thank you and have a good day. Did I just rip off uh, L.A. Beast? Yes, I just ripped off L.A. Beast. You know, I don't know if I'll do that maybe regularly. I may decide to... Uh, to rip off famous YouTubers' uh, little catchphrases at the end of my uh, news watches. I may or may not. We'll see how it goes. But for this one, let me say, have a good day.